hoping to have a reference for our celebration, the autumnal equinox. Um, actually, here in Copper Records, for many years, we've been celebrating the various seasons, the eight seasons um, throughout the year, eight festivals of the year. Uh, so we've celebrated song, um, the new year, the tenth of the new year, celebrated the winter solstice, um, Imbol, the vernal equinox, um, Bialgina, summer solstice, Lunisa, and then the autumnal equinox. So we've been doing that for a num number of years, but at present, of course, because of the COVID pandemic, uh, well, we've, we've decided to go online and to, to offer you the opportunity to see what we, what we do here. So you're welcome to, to at least to tune into our celebration. So we're going to, so we're going to begin now. I'm going to ask um, Una to do some, some intro. Well, as Michael has said, this is our shot at the Autumnal Equinox 2020. Just to say that in Ireland, some people mightn't believe it, but long before the Celtic tribes ever arrived, the Autumnal Equinox was celebrated here. Uh, this year, the Equinox occurs tomorrow, Tuesday, at 9.30 in the morning. Equinoxes, it has to be said, are not, in fact, day-long events at all. They happen at the moment that the, the sun crosses the celestial equator. That's the imaginary line in the sky above the Earth's equator. The sun is moving, I suppose, so to speak, from the northern to the southern hemisphere. The North Pole begins to tilt away from the sun, day and night have approximately the same length. And in Irish, we call that day Lá Leabach, the day of the halves. The autumnal uh, equinox generally occurs on the 22nd or 23rd of September. Occasionally, it can occur on the 21st or even on the 24th of September. A September 21st equinox has not occurred, in fact, for several millennia, contrary to public belief and our own belief before we started this study. But in the 21st century, it will happen twice. It will happen in 2092 and again in 2096. This eventually moves the day, the date by day. The last September the 24th equinox was in 1931, and the next one will be in 2303. The Gregorian calendar has 365 days. The orbit around the sun takes 365 and a quarter days of the earth. So each September this means that the equinox is six hours later. The word equinox comes from the Latin equus meaning equal and nox meaning that night. The full moon closest to the September equinox is called the harvest moon. Now this year, the moon, the full moon nearest to our equinox is not the September one at all, because that was on September the 1st. It is actually on October the 1st, and that will be known as the harvest moon. So they called the moon that came on the 1st of September, the corn moon. Now why harvest moon? Because during the few days when that moon is full, we have an earlier rising of that moon and that gives our farmers a little more time in the evenings to bring in their harvest. And funny enough, next month in October, while we have our full moon on the 1st of October, we have another full moon coming on the 31st of October. 
So it's an October of two full moons. And in that case, the second full moon is called the blue moon. We know the saying, once in a very blue moon. And I know that in older literature, uh, two moons in a month was dreaded, two full moons. And we think that what might have happened was that if you had two full moons in a month, they were very close to each other, maybe, and you could have such a pull in the tides that you'd have flooding. Well, now our climate has changed so much, we can have the flooding more often and the storms more frequently. Now to go into the mythology just for a few moments. In Ireland, the main archaeological sites connected with the autumn equinox are in Nauf and also in Loch Crewe in County Meath. So that's just a little photograph of Loch Crewe showing some of the burial mounds. There is a particular mound in Loch Crewe, a very famous one, and that is called Cairn T. Now Cairn T is very important because it is over 6,000 years old. There's a closer one of it for you. And Cairn T has the rising sun on the morning of the equinox and it goes in along the chamber in Cairn T and it travels right along the channel to the back wall and the back wall is very rich in art and ornamentation. We have court tombs, court and passage tombs and very well worth a visit at all times. The sun, when it goes to the back wall in autumn, shows the lovely art and architecture. However, when it goes to the back wall at the spring or vernal equinox, it shows up the art and architecture much more clearly. Because I suppose the vernal moon might be that little bit stronger, the sun, I should say. Now, it is said, of course, that those sites could have been used also as sites of sacrifice. It's also speculated that these sites were used for rituals relating to the earth, healing and empowerment. Of course, many ceremonies denoting gratitude for the harvest would have been common at sacred sites around Ireland at this time of year. As we're here in Holy Cross now this morning, we will talk about Holy Cross and its connection with the autumn equinox. It's connected by way of seven days further from the date of the equinox. It's connected by the 29th of September, which is the Feast of St. Michael, known locally in Holy Cross for generations as Michaelmas Day. This has always been a very special day in Holy Cross, up to about 30 or so years ago, in that it was regarded as a full holy day. Schools were closed. Even children who went to school in Thurlis took the day off. People from Holy Cross who worked anywhere out of Holy Cross took the day off also, as well as the people of Holy Cross. That morning, everybody attended Mass in the old church, and once I remember it happening in the ruins of the Abbey, just the year that restoration was starting. Then it was in the Abbey for a while after that. As I say, there was Mass first, and following Mass then, we had a procession from the church right up beyond the village, up to what's known as the Green. And that procession would have all the people of Holy Cross who were able to walk, and the children who had got First Communion that June, they, in full regalia, in full First Communion regalia, they marched up to the green as well. The Blessed Sacrament was taken up, hymns were sung, and benediction took place at the green. After this, people, of course, went home and they had their late lunch, 
And like the Christmas lunch, it was a lunch of much ceremony, ritual. It was known as the Michaelmas lunch, and what was served was the Michaelmas goose. And it was served with all its accompaniments, which were items from the harvest, like apples and berries and so on, and sauces. After that, they had, would have had a dessert, I'm sure, or whatever form. And later that evening, everybody went and had the Michaelmas harvest dance. But the monks, the Cistercian monks, while they were here in Holy Cross, showed a very great devotion to St. Michael. And from September the 15th to September the 29th, a fair was held on the green that I mentioned, where the monks sold their produce and local growers and traders joined them and sold their produce as well. And this is the reason that the area is known as the Fair Green. Now, the colours we associate with the autumnal equinox are gold, brown, red, green and russet. Okay, and on our display I have the four elements, earth, air, fire and water. Now the earth, we all live on the earth, it nourishes us, it produces our food, it grounds us. Air. We need fresh air to keep our lungs healthy. Fire we use in cooking and lots of other things. And water, which we use um, to bathe in, to cook with, to wash with, to cleanse. Okay, to swim in the river or the sea. Okay, um, I'm quoting a line from Keats. What is it? Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. And that's autumn, and autumn produces all our fruits. And I've picked a few fruits off the hedgerow. For instance, we have the sloes here and the blackthorn. We have the blackberries on the bramble. And we have the hips on the dog rose. Okay, just going with um, the sloes first. The sloes grow on the blackthorn tree. And... Um, there are places called after um, both the blackthorn and the fruits of the blackthorn. For instance, we have um, Anshkiaktuv is the blackthorn, and we have places called Gort Neshkeha, the garden of the blackthorn. 
and the snows then um, we have places called Drangen and Mona Dream called after the snows and we also have um, Killarney and um, the wood of the snow as well and um, next we have the blackberry on the bramble now the bramble as you all know is a ferocious climber moving upwards at great speed with its vicious thorns and catching on to other um, trees and bushes for support. And one, um, one of the insects that very much likes the, the bramble is the shield bug. And the shield bug lays her eggs on the backs of the leaves of the bramble. Okay, and the last one we have then, um, the hips growing on the dog rose. These are full of vitamin C and they make the rose hip syrup from them and the birds eat them then late on in the autumn when they've got a good touch of hard frost. And also on our centrepiece we have the halls growing on the pythorn or the shkapyal. Okay, and our migrant birds come into Ireland from Scandinavian countries, such as the, the field fair and the red wing, to eat um, the haws of the hawthorn. 